So all the way from Malaysia to Cairo, we are going to speak about uh, talent investment and talent economy uh, with Sharif. Sharif, could you please introduce yourself and what do you do for business? Uh, yes, I'm Sharifuddin Ahmed Rana. Basically, I am a uh, uh, PhD scholar and uh, uh, I have uh, a master's of business administration and I finished my PhD. Besides that, uh, I, I do engage with the innovative industries. Uh, I launched uh, in the COVID-19 situations, I launched an initiative called World Talent Economy Forum. First, I want to define that world talent, what is world talent economy? So, so talent economy is, is something new, something innovative, something creative that, that we engage with all of the innovative industry we are working together, let's say from Malaysia, from Cyberja to Silicon Valleys, even many Ivy League university like MIT, Stanford, uh, uh, and many, many creative corporations like Microsoft, uh, like uh, Google, and all of the important corporations we are working together. And especially we, we produce a lot of startup. We are producing a lot of technology, a lot of um, innovative solutions, modern science, modern engineering and technology. And we do work as a policy advocate with government, with corporations. And this is the way we are actually making a breezing in between industry and academia. And hundreds of different countries, uh, different corporations like academies, startups, innovative persons, we are working together even many people, they win uh, Nobel Prize. Even example, UN Secretary General, Dr. Talib Rafael, World Economy Forum's directors, advisor from uh, IBM, Google, Microsoft, many famous personalities, we are working together. Many think tanks, we are working together and we want to go for a positive change of our society. It's not only the gap in between developed nations and developing nations. We want to minimize the gap because people from, let's say Ivy League University, let's say from Stanford and people from Cairo, there is no difference. Difference is only exposure. So we believe that if we can bring all of the talent people together, we can solve many problems. Let's say COVID-19 situation, climate change, sustainable development goals, many problems we can solve together and we can sustain together. So this is our philosophically as well as policy wise, and practically we are solving these things. So my, my main question here is like, how would you define talent? Like, is there a difference between professional talent and just personal talent? Like at what stage would you accept a talent to invest in? Okay, let's say we work with impact investment companies like Swiss Impact Investment. They have around $1 trillion impact investment opportunities from around the world for investing on different kind of startup. Actually, like example, in this stage, like I, I'm now in this stage, in the professional stage, I have to, like example, move from one level to another level. So personally, I have to grow myself with my academic backgrounds. I have to explore around the world from Oxford, from Cambridge, from Harvard, everywhere. Even I have to finish my education. It's a process. I want to say it's a process. If you want to grow our skills, grow our knowledge and grow our innovative, like every people actually talent, every people has their potentiality, every people has their own credibility, but they have to know how to explore their capacity, how to build up their capacity, how to achieve their career goals. So this is the area we are working that, that how they can achieve their individual career. Let's say we have a autonomous vehicle company from Malaysia, from Cyberja. And in the COVID-19 situations, we do work with some best company from Silicon Valley and we transfer their technology from Cyberja to uh, example to Silicon Valley. So this is knowledge transformations, business transformation, technology transformation with the capacity. So we find, let's say people from Africa, people from Europe, people from USA, even people from Asia Pacific, there is no difference. Only thing is connectivity. Connectivity is a productivity because example, this is the first time I meet with you. You have your own potentiality. You have your own creativity. I have my own positive attitudes. So let's march together and build something positive 
and change your society. That is our objective. So another question here, like what kind of support system would you give to these prospect uh, or these talents? Okay, first thing first, what we ensured, let's say we already run 250th episode. And in this area, we, we try to engage with all of the best platform around the world. It's United Nation, it's a Ivy League University, it's World Economy Forum, it's uh, even small startup to big corporations. It's IBM's two small startup. Everywhere we make a strong collaborations. We ensure impact investment. We ensure global technology analyst. We ensure the researcher. We ensure governments, politicians. We ensure corporations. We ensure people who can join and who can build our, their ecosystems. So I want to say it's a 360 degree angles ecosystems. Let's join and enjoy your capacities and potentiality. So let's say like some, not many people would be able or would have this kind of, uh, let's say courage to be able to uh, reach out to people like you and then like say they are ready to express mm -hmm. their talent. What, what would you tell them? I, I just want to say that example, connectivity is productivity. Let's say we will connect with the productive people. Let's say you are my friend from Egypt. You are the best heart. You have the best potentiality. Let's work together. Maybe we can change only five people life. This is enough. Maybe we can change millions of people enough. This is also good, but change is important. Support is important. What we can do, that's, that is important. So our target, we want to reach at least millions of people and we want to change millions of people life. This is our objective. Maybe I can change only five people lives that is enough i feel that that is enough but our objective is big and already we are reaching all of the important person and many developing nations people example let's say egypt egypt has youth community egypt has young talent egypt has creative egypt has better knowledge and ecosystems so we want to connect with all of the important things so we believe connectivity is productivity and we need to capitalize our productivity with the best ecosystem. So my, my question here, like you, you are speaking on an international basis, like you want to reach people internationally. Like, is this something easy on your side? Like, how do you manage a wide network of connections around the world? It's really difficult. When we start anything, a lot of rejection, a lot of failures, a lot of people, you cannot do it. It's impossible. You are not in the right track. You have this problem, that problem. Sometimes to achieve your objective, you have to be blind. You know, you have to just, just feel your inner inside beauty, just inner things. So my inner feelings that I can achieve it, I find a lot of rejections, but my skin is very hard. I don't care. I just want to move forward and I just want to achieve my objectives. Sometimes I am blind, sometimes I cannot hear clearly, but I just hear one thing is clear from my heart. From my heart, I feel that I can do it and I do it. Example, transdisciplinary Agora for Future discussion is one of the global think tank. So as a futuristic leaders, they select me, one of the vice chancellor for from uh, South Africa, one of the big universities, as well as Harvard University professors and uh, some important person. I'm very young, but I prove to the global community that it's practically possible. We can make it and we make it. And people come up with many thoughts, like it's not possible. But if your heart say it's possible, let's make it and it's possible. Now you mentioned a number of, uh, let's say, specialities where people can uh, reach out to you or like express their talent. What, which fields do you support most? Actually, at present, my major observation, because we do a lot of research in developing nations, country like Egypt, country like, example, let's say South Africa, Nigeria, Indonesia, Vietnam, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, example, these kind of countries, we are observing that technology is very important. Modern science is very important. 
So we, we want to give the priority, technology, science, and all of the modern things, innovative things, those have the ability to uh, uh, give the new solution for this world. We are actually want to give them priority. We are not go with the traditional things. Yes, traditional small startup also important. Maybe it's engaged with your culture, with engaged with your things. We also support that kind of things. But our priority, modern science, modern engineering and modern technology. So my question is like you are focusing more on using technology and the English as an, a language medium here. Like how, yes. how about the people who would not have these uh, things at hand? No problem. We will train you. We have a very good amount of faculty. Let's even Stanford University professor. He can teach you for your English communications. We have many, many people from first world like, like, like they are native speakers they will train you. Those who do not have uh, proper communication skills, we will train you. That is our specialty. If anyone need training, anyone need development, anyone to enhance their capacity, we are there. It has been an honor talking to you, uh, Sharif, today. Thank you so much for your time and for your great endeavors for all humanity all over the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for all of your things and I want to invite you and all of your friends, colleagues in our World Talent Economy Forum initiative. It's our pleasure.